The most recent information is the uh, use of immunocheckpoint inhibitors for the treatment of hemologic malignancies. And uh, so what you have to understand is that the immune system can be turned on in a variety of different ways. One is you can directly activate it and the immune system will come up and start killing tumor cells. And, and so that's basically putting the gas pedal down, if you will. Another way to do it is actually take the brakes off. So there is certain, the immune system is actually controlled that it, there's mechanisms to stop it from being activated. So there are now antibodies that can actually stop the inactivation and that taking the brakes off and therefore activating the immune system. And uh, the reason why this has been so important and talked about at this, uh, this year's ASH is it turns out that uh, some of the, there's, a, there's a whole host of immuno checkpoint inhibitors, but the one in particular is this PD-1, PD-L1 system. Uh, and in particular, what uh, has been discovered in part through uh, the funding of our grants, uh, and Leukemia Lymphoma funds a, a variety of grants. Um, uh, so, one of these immuno checkpoint inhibitors, PDL1, is highly expressed, and it turns out to be highly expressed on Hodgkin's lymphoma cells. There's certain cells within the Hodg within these lymphomas called Reed Sternberg cells. They have very high expression of PDL1, and that uh, discovery. Um, led to the impetus to use immuno checkpoint inhibitors to see if they would be useful in hematologic malignancies. And the studies were done by a few companies because there are multiple companies that have antibodies to these, uh, to PD PD-1 or PD-L1. Turns out that the response rate in two independent studies, there's two companies that have distinct antibodies in both cases had a very high response rate to patients who had Hodgkin's lymphoma who had failed existing therapy. Uh, so the implication is that you can turn the immune system on to kill the tumor cells. Now understand that for Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, we've been able to treat 85-90% of these patients and achieve cures. However, we've been able to do that with fairly harsh chemotherapy or radiation. Uh, and beyond that, 10% of the patients or 15% do not have a good response, very difficult to treat, and there are very limited options for these patients. These studies were done in those type of patients that are difficult to treat. That's number one. And number two is the side effect profile of these uh, so-called PD PD-1 antibodies is fairly benign. Um, and so it would look like uh, this is going to be a, an, an a, at a minimum, an alternative therapy uh, for the use in Hodgkin's refractory Hodgkin's lymphoma. And that's why uh, one of the companies got uh, breakthrough st status designation. Uh, so that means that uh, there is a very encouraging sign of efficacy with, with good safety. And the other implication is you might be able to begin to move away from the harsh chemotherapy that we've used now for about uh, 30, 40 years to control the disease.